we've got sound there now. <clears throat> we should have some kind of sound there now, have we? Can someone just come back there and just tell me if we got sound? Because I have no way of telling. Um, <clears throat> I can see definitely some... Um, <laughs> Jean-Luc is on there, uh, good to go, Paddy McCarthy's on there, so we've got sound, I think, am I correct? Yes, yes, we seem to have sound, everyone's on there, uh, you're back, hi everybody, sorry about that little bit of mishap, um, don't know why that was there, hello to everybody, Graham Conley, Miles Riley, uh, Robbie Berry, how you doing Robbie, everyone's on there, Robert Flatty, everyone's on there, Declan Noonan, how you going, sorry about that little bit of mishap, a um, little bit of a rush this evening to get everything set up and I, I just happened to miss that one so um hi colin hackett hi declan smith john hawthorne loud and clear good stuff colin healy uh there we go um patrick mccarthy not good enough <laughs> sorry about that there no patty tommy lane how you keeping tommy hope everybody's well and ready for another saturday night fly time here in the starry fly um so this week um hi stephen livingston how you doing patrick smith graham Connolly. Hope everyone's keeping well. Um, so Neil Hamilton, it's a little bit low, Neil. Okay, bear with me one second, and I'll just have a quick look at that again before I get started. So what we are going to do tonight is... Um, okay, I see where it's gone as regards um, sound. I'm going to put it onto this one. And how does that sound now? Is that coming in better for you all? Give it a second there now, and it should be coming in better, I'm hoping. Uh, Michael Callaghan, how are you keeping? Um, Stephen Potts is on there. All's going good, Stephen. Tommy Lane, yeah, not too bad. Keeping well, keeping well. Uh, hi, Peter Doherty. Um, hope you're all keeping well, guys. And um, everyone's looking forward to another Saturday night, a bit of flight time. Um, okay, what I actually started on with there, he's missed that one. Maybe that for a reason. Anyone get dragged to pennies? Pennies, we're all we're starting to open up a little bit, coming out of lockdown. Hi, Kevin Collins. Coming out of lockdown a bit, thank God. Uh, a little bit of life coming back to the towns. And uh, great to see it. Hopefully, we, we keep on the moving in that direction. Um, don't tell me it's gone again. Uh, Miles Riley's sound is fine here. Thanks, Miles. Um, okay, I hope we're good on the sound, guys and girls. Um, just going to have one more quick look at it, and then I'll... Uh, I'll proceed on because um should be okay. It's it's set up it's set up as um yeah Peter Peter Doherty saying there's sound is fine. So if it's a bit low for some people maybe uh, turn it up a little bit on your it's set up as far as I can see as I normally Mike Auxiliary. Uh yeah, that should be it. Sounds good in Belfast. My sister's on there from Sh Shree Drive around from Belfast Shree. You're gonna learn a few things tonight. Make sure you stay on with us. Uh, Declan Noon is on the perfect. Yes, Grant, look it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head on. I can get lost in some of these things. And anyway. I hope everyone's having a good Saturday. Anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight? This is our final instalment of Nymphon, uh, November slash December because we lost a week along the way, um, with the Irish Fly Fair. Um, and what I want to do tonight is move away from the likes of, um, G Cooks and stuff like that. Um, I want to move on to kind of more curved curved nymphs scrub nymphs that kind of stuff so we're going to be doing some shrimp patterns tonight we're going to be doing uh some flashback stuff uh we're going to be doing a nymph and this is the first time any video has ever been done of this nymph this is a nymph that we came um uh, graham Connolly's in the middle of the north sea good man graham uh, and he said it's, it's pretty good out there so not too bad we're going to do a pebble cat okay a pebble cat's a nymph that i've never done a video on before it's one of our own um it's one of my own patterns invented it for um invented it for the saka in italy dylan roberts how you doing dylan great to have you there dylan's from wales um we're going to do a pebble cat it's a it's an info I, I tied for say the saka in italy and uh, while it caught some fish there it really came into own hi bernie bernie my other sisters on there two sisters on tonight great stuff um but this pebble cat, I'm not going to tell you how it's got the name. Okay, I'm going to leave that one up to, to If any of you want to try and guess how the pebble cat got the name, I can guarantee you're not going to get it. But you can have a crack at it if you want. Okay, but the pebble cat's a nymph that really came into its own when I went to British, British Columbia two years ago. Now, 
fish and lock style, mind you. But uh, we certainly gained an awful lot of confidence in it, and it's been outstanding ever since. I not only fishing on a river, I fish it on the banks too quite a bit. Uh, so it's really one that's going to come along later in the show. You're definitely going to stay tuned in for that one. It's a belter of a nymph. Um, so we're going to do some shrimps. We're going to do some flashbacks. Um, different things like that, using different materials and showing that it's not all about jig hooks. Um, you know, there's other other nymphs out there that work really well. Uh, great to have everyone on tonight. Great to see everyone that's not gone out for dinner too much. There's a few people missing. I think Dave was on earlier on. Dave Donovan. He's. I think Dave was dragged to the shops. Who dragged out the pennies this evening? Uh, Rita dragged them out. So Dave, if you manage to sneak in out, quick peek there. How you doing? Hope you're keeping well. Hope you. Um, Hope you go. Oh, Robbie Berry's on there, and you said he got the Mika powder during the week. So how is everyone getting on with their Mika powder patterns? Anybody got any pictures? Send them along tonight, please. Send me on some Mika powder pictures uh, of the nymphs you tied, of course. Uh, want to see them all? I know there was a guy on during the week from Montana that watched us last week, and he went mental about a whole heap of it, and he can't wait to see. Uh, can't wait to see his his results over in Montana. He hadn't heard of it either. So if anybody got the Mika powder during the week and got to play with it. Uh, James Gibson got it too, good man James. Uh, send me over some pictures. Let's share it to the group here. Let's share and see see what Mika designs came out during the week. Um, really looking forward to hearing. Or even just let us know how you got on with it. Like, you know, if you're having any issues with it or whatever, it's 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 you know, it's it's something that hasn't really been overexposed. So it's you know, it's a bit of play bit of playtime there with it. But um if you if you have managed to design stuff, take some pictures there and send them on and let the group see and uh, we'll see how we all get on. But anyway, let's get into some flight then. First thing we're going to do is a flashback pheasant head. It's nice and simple. Simple, easy pattern. There's a little bit of technique to it. And um, we want to have a talk through it. Um, so basically I got a, this hook that I have in here. There's a couple of hooks you can use for doing the um, kind of, you know, curved grub hook kind of stuff like that. If you want to stick to a barbed hook, the Camazan B100 can't go past it. Um, for me, the C4, the C46FWBL... Uh, Maruto is one of my favorite okay love that hook love the steel that's in it uh, love the shape that's on it um, and the sizes you've also got the 644 by Duhaku not it's good we're going to be using that for an inf later on you got the 611s which is a dry fly hook and um, so you do run the risk of straightening it but if you are looking to go that finer wire if that pallet of the throat is quite hard and you want to penetrate you want that wire to penetrate a bit more well then definitely go down the road at the 611 but in this here, anyway, I've got that Marutu C46FWBL, and that is a size 12. I've got a 3mm um, copper countersunk bead on that there now at the moment. And I'm just going to start off and, as usual, add in that bit of Kevlar. Um, for a tail here, I am just going to use a little bit of Cotillion, as always. And you can put a little bit of pheasant tail on there if you want. An awful lot of tires that tie this particular pattern put on a pheasant tail. Um, but for me, I'm going to stick to my cotillion for the moment. A little pinch of cotillion. I'm still waiting for that first picture of the Mika powder patterns coming in. Just trap it in there. Bring it around down the bend of the hook a little bit. You can adjust it slightly if you want. Make sure it stays on top of the hook. I'm not mad about big long tails on this style of nymph. Then come back up and trap it in well. Yeah, Dylan. Hey, how's it going? Jeez, yeah, it should be the it should be the Hannock. The Hannock weekend this weekend. It would have been um the Hannock Grayland Festival over in the Welsh D. Definitely one of my favourite fishing weekends of the year. Um, absolutely fantastic venue, fantastic competition, fantastic group of guys. Look forward to it so much every year. Wow. Look at and we we've been lucky in it over the years. Thank God that the the Welsh Day has always been very good to me. Um, but look at hey, Dylan. Hopefully, um, hopefully next year, Dylan. Hopefully next year we can make up for it. Um, the Davies on there from Cork. Do you have no sound in Cork, Davy? I've been messing around with it there. And there's a few people coming in and say, do you have sound? Maybe have a look at your own. Uh, hey, Tom O'Connor. Uh, have you got sound down there in Cork, Tom? Um, I'm going to put in a little bit of wire here. This is just a uh, copper wire. Uh, I'm 
yeah the same as that robbie robbie uses on some of his f flies you can you can use these for dries as well um, next week we're actually this is the last week of our nymph in november so next week we're actually going to do a whole session um we're going to do a whole session on dry flies there's been a lot of guys asking about different types of clinks and stuff like that so we're going to specialize next weekend on a whole um four hours of um dry flies so you do have sound on there tom is it um so next weekend a whole session on dry flies and then we're actually going to take a break for a week if you don't mind i'm going to take a saturday night off and um i know he's going to miss me but i might stick up something there to keep you occupied um sound and cavern we have sound and cavern it's good that's good uh hard luck today kieran sherlock he's put up a good display there um unfortunately he just didn't get the you know um he just didn't get the the, the the look at it the look at the bounce i suppose or the toss of the, the rub of the green but um fair play to cavern um <laughs> dry fly december yeah dry fly december so we're going to do a week next week on dries then we're going to take a break for a week because the week after is um the week after is the christmas special which is not to be missed we have a lot of great plans we have a lot of special guests coming on we've got some guest tires we've got a bucket load of prizes to give away it's going to be a bit of crack it's going to go on a bit longer we're going to start at eight o'clock and we're probably going to go in a little bit longer um a little bit longer we got loads of great patterns stuff like that so definitely don't miss the 27th for the, the, the christmas special you're really going to want we're going to have a bit of fun that night um loads of guest stars and by the way i want to mention anybody like you know during the week um during the week um you know this, i was talking to a few people and they said it's great you know the same people are coming back here every week and they're having a bit of a chat and blah blah, blah and it's great but you know some people don't know their faces so if anybody wants to send me a video hi jack cregan from every leaks um if anybody wants to send me a little video wishing happy christmas to all our regulars by all means do just put it onto facebook messenger take the little video and send it over to me and we will post the next uh, in our christmas special so by all means if anybody wants to say hello to everybody so people know the face behind the names who makes all the comments and blah blah, blah well then by all means send us over a little video we'd love to have it um <laughs> so pascari fly is on there that's the real boss lads uh that's the wife she's downstairs watching she checks in every saturday night to make sure it's uh I'm, I'm doing my job right and she's saying she might give me next saturday night off all oh, right so we'll see now we'll see how the week goes with that one but um so anyway i've added a little bit of copper in there i need to get focused on my time here I'm getting distracted by all these messages and stuff but great to see so many people on here if anybody wants to hit the share button there and share it on their page by all means do um okay martin fennessy on there. how are you doing martin good stuff premier county martin's in tipperary best luck tomorrow martin uh tipperary are in the other semi-final hope he's hope he's doing the business tomorrow uh neil walker do you know what how do you know what size of bead to use or is it just see what fits a little bit of boat neil um for me it's it's all depends on the profile of the nymph i want it depends where i'm going fish sometimes i'll put a large bead on uh, a smaller body and then sometimes i'll want it a bit more uniform um it depends and it depends on the hook i'm using too where if i say to you use a three mil on a size 12 c4 wbl the one i'm using now marutu if i was using a size 12 611 the haku it might be a 3.5 mil bead that i'm using on that to get the proportion particularly right so it's an awful lot to do with the depth of water i want to fish with it um you know the, the kind of style of tying that you have the way you like your nymphs to, be, to look at the end of the at the end of the whole thing um that would uh, determine what bead now when it comes to jig hooks it's a little bit different but when it comes to these kind of grubby curved hooks um that's what would determine for me um what size bead am i going to use on the um, on the hook i hope i hope that makes some kind of sense to you neil um so anyway i've added in a little bit of size 14 per miler and now i'm going to take a couple of strands of cock pheasant tail okay so for doing the likes of these we're always looking for the longer you know barbs coming off a cock pheasant tail feather and sometimes we don't have that luxury so don't be ever afraid to do it in two segments okay and i'm actually even though i probably have long enough barbs here but i am um <laughs> Neil Hamilton go ahead. Uh, so Derek Green is on there and he said try turning it off. Anyone that has sound problems and turn it on again, 
knock um knock it off your notifications on facebook and click it on again and work for him so i hope that's helping everyone with sound sorry that was my little mix up there at start so even though my pheasant tails are long enough here to probably do an entire body i'm actually going to do this one in two halves just to show you that don't ever be afraid if your pheasant tails aren't long enough don't try and stretch them out just use just go halfway and then start again okay so i've got three or four pheasant tail fibers here and i'm going to start winding them up the body now i want to get a natural taper on this building up okay so i want to start as slim as possible and then taper up because i'm going to be adding a thorax so let's just say if my pheasant tails got me that far i'd have to tie them off okay if i'm using short pheasant tails or if it is the case um good stuff davy you're back on hi deirdre delaney hope you're keeping well so if it is the case that you don't have long enough pheasant tails or you've got your tiny size 10 or something like that and you know don't try and stretch them out go halfway stop pick out another segment of uh pheasant tail and attach it in there again secure it in well just make sure you tie it back onto the previous match and then start again keep an eye on your tapers make sure you've just got good consistency on the taper and build it up like so leave a gap there there's, there's no need to go too near the bead we're going to have a lot of work to go in there yet to do this pheasant tail um this pheasant tail okay so there's the your basic body on that pheasant tail going to now take my pearl just putting a little bit of tension on it there to make sure it's coming directly out of the back of the bead. So hold in a nice bit of tension on it. It can slip from side to side and that happens. So just take your time doing it. A little bit of tension. Hold it on the top. Put your tread over. As your tread goes over the far side hook. Put the pressure on the tread. Take the pressure off the, the pearl. And then hold the pearl with your finger and thumb in place. Till you get a couple of nice turns in there. Okay. Sits nice on the top of the body. Alright. Again when you're tying the legs these. Have a nice long bit of pearl there and um, don't leave it real short yourself have it long and then it um you'll never have uh, too much problems getting on the top and even when we're doing the ribbon sometimes it can move so don't ever be uh, getting too worried about it bit of copper wire and i'm just going to rib up rib up there hi david cocklin hope you're keeping well down there from my county of cork gonna just rib that up now as you can see nice even turns up the body give it a bit of strength a little bit of segmentation and just you know put your finger at home make sure it's all sitting in there nice and pretty and easy so no one has sent me any pictures or have they um any pictures of um the mica mica powder fly patterns come on robbie berry you surely had a play with it <laughs> so bobbin holders hi graham lanigan uh hi tony Regan. um the bobbin holders that i use this one is a stone foe uh Tiemco is probably one of the better ones, which I use an awful lot of. And uh, that one, that one, that's Tiemco there. Tiemco uh, ceramic bobble home, they're fantastic. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more than Stonefo, but you know what, they're worth it. Especially when you're working, and as you all know, I use an awful lot of Tommy Fly, which can be a little bit brittle um, and can fray a little bit. You know, Tiemco just saves an awful lot of hardship. So definitely Tiemco. Stonefo is okay. Um, I had a, and actually when I went to do, or when I was, going to do my exams in um apco a couple of ah geez going back a bit now um i went and bought myself some fancy tools spent a bit of money on them um what is the brand um you know you all know what i mean it's it's, it's a pricey brand but i got the the, um, the tray bobbin i'm totally honest here didn't like it couldn't get used to it um and uh Pigeon, mark Pigeon, and um because i have his with finish here i've actually managed to use that but just couldn't get it couldn't get um <laughs> davy brennick's on there and so since dave is busy tonight he might give tonight's quiz question will he send on the address for prize now very good and uh, we'll think of something dave said he might check in with us now so keep an eye on the feed there guys he might check in with us to to throw out an old prize he, he, he i was talking to him today and he said geez he was fierce worried that you're all going to miss him and he said you're not going to believe it Rita's dragged me off to pennies tonight he's gone to pennies uh to do a bit of shopping i think uh maybe some of the underwear might be worn out at this stage so dave if you're watching i hope you're enjoying pennies he said he might get a little sneak look in um 
and he said he might get to throw up a new question. He has a good question, a very good question indeed. Um, he asked if I could ask it, but really and truly I couldn't because I wouldn't be able to keep an eye on the feed uh, to see who was the first question in. So, um, so basically, I'm just after cutting it off. Now you can fold back that bit of pearl there, but I am I, I, I like to take it away, make sure everything's nice, nice and tidy, and then just add it back in. Um, just thinking in my head, make sure I'm right here and I'm doing this. There's a few stages to this end of the fly that I want to get right for you. Um, ah, Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. He's going to play with it tomorrow night. Robbie's going to play with it tomorrow night. So next week on our dry fly section, I will allow people to put on the, to show me some of their, uh, to show me some of their um, Mika powder in creations. Um, so what I'm doing here, so I want to put a few little legs on it. So we can use our dubbing um <laughs> there's a great question what did dave get in a uh, good man graham Langan? what did dave get in pennies geez dave we're going to give you a right rip tonight um what did dave done with him buying pennies um so what you can do here is to add a few legs okay so you can use really spiky dub and brush it out and stuff like that and that works great i just want my legs just a little bit more kind of um predominant kind of sticking out a bit more and what you see an awful lot of guys using is partridge and i do i do use the partridge soft packer partridge is um um, good man, Neil. Neil is doing the dishes. Neil is doing the dishes tonight, so Neil's not in work tonight. Well, I don't know which is which is better, Neil, for you. But um, a bit of partridge can add beautiful speckled legs to it, um, and I do use that quite regularly. I'm gonna maybe do something with a bit of the partridge later on. Show you a bit of partridge. But I have this this particular little pattern. What I actually use here is a little bit of um, this hen cape. Bought it for maybe two or three euros in the fly fair at one stage. It's a hen grizzle slash cree dark browny kind of yolk, and this stuff to give those extra legs is just a beautiful color. Probably paid about three or four quid for it. It's always worth rooting in those bins at the different fly fairs and stuff like that that have all those cheap hen capes, cheap cock capes. As you find something, you know, it's just that little bit different, and next thing you tie a fly with it, and it's 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 absolutely you know really interesting color, um, lovely for a nice natural, uh, little bit of a leggy pattern, just a little bit of a I say extra little bit of legs in this one so i'm just going to strip back a little hackle there and i'm going to just tie that in there as well i'm going to use that now in a minute you'll see how i'll use that one um now for a little bit of dubbing for this one um we're going to use a little bit of uh hairline ice peacock okay um And so what I really wanted to show this week was that, you know, it's not all about jig nymphs. It's not all about these perdigons. There is a little bit more stuff. And my rule at home when I normally talk to somebody that's starting off and getting into fly things, especially getting into your nymphs, uh, you know, one of my first things I, I would always say to them is keep it simple. You know, four or five components. And, um, you know, that's, that's as, as, you know, you need to keep it that way. And that is true. And I stand by that principle. But when we go to these kind of curved stuff and, and things like that, you know, there is a few more extra stages there. There's a few more components, and there is a time where these will work um, when we're looking for more natural rep representations of what the fish might be feeding on. Um, and they are worth, you know, having a couple in the box and tying on them. Um, but I still stick, say stick to the principle of keeping it simple, you know. Um, and an awful lot of people get wrapped up in the whole Perdigon thing, or they get wrapped up in the whole jig thing, and they tie boxes and boxes of jig nymphs. There's times when the jig just doesn't put the mustard with the, with the trout and they want something a little bit different a little bit more natural and uh, and the best thing about these names too these work great on lock style you know if you're on a bank session and you want something a bit more natural well just put this on a long nymph on a long leader two of them and if kevin lafford was on there tonight he'd swear by you know nymphing um using river nymphs in um in lakes and especially when we get on to that pebble cat later on that you just don't want to miss um you know that's going to prove the point that river nymphs do work in lakes and you know we need to you know experiment sometimes so this style of nymph would be more um towards the would be to more more towards that so all i'm going to do is just put a little one two two and a half turns there not overpower it we don't want a whole blast of that hackle in over our dark peacock get in there and tidy it up Make sure there's a turn or two gone in there to make sure it was nice and secure. So Tom O'Connor wants a bit of help. Here we go, lads. We've, we've got we've got something to do here. Tom O'Connor wants a bit of help. 
He wants to get something for the wife for Christmas. 22 years married, God bless her. And he's bought most things, but he's completely blank. Ah, the Gianluca. The war papers. Ah, my God. Uh, Gianluca, Gianluca. So, Tom, now, I know Tom, look at I shouldn't really tell this. By the way, Tom, you're an absolute gentleman. He sent me little, me little girl up a lovely present, a Christmas decoration, a few gold coins uh, that had chocolate inside, and she was over the moon when I, when I showed her. So, thank you very much, Tom O'Connor. Much appreciated. Uh, you're an absolute gent. Um, Miles Riley's on there, and he recommends a fishing rod. But, man, Miles, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> So someone has to come up tonight with a prize for Tom's wife. Now I know Tom, and I've been travelling with Tam a long, long, long time. And Tom, you might kill me now for what I'm going to tell you. But Tom used to buy the wife uh, after shift because he never, he, he just didn't realise, um, he didn't realise the difference. But anyway, when we come back to airports, I think we were so tired, Tom, after all our, a port, Tom Sankatel reckons a portrait of yourself so she recognise you when you get back from fishing. That's a good one. Graham Lonigan's on there and he says, uh, some gear, French, Colin Healy's on there, a French bulldog. Uh, I'll have a think of it there now, Tom, and we'll see if we can come up with Tom there, help Tom out, lads, out. He's looking for a wife. He's looking for a present for the wife. 22 years married, and he's completely blank. He's bought her pretty much everything at this stage, and um, he wants to get her something. So let's see if we can come up. Uh, uh, Tom, did he send up any more? No, Eugene, he didn't send up any more Jew, but he sent me up a little, lovely little mystery bottle of something. And I'm um, not going to dabble in it tonight. Might save that for next Saturday night when I don't have to do a live show. Because, um, but Tom, you did. You sent me up a little bottle of something. And a beautiful jar of your honey. Must say, Tom, Tom, Tom's honey is the purest honey out there. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Save it for me kids. We'll keep the colds and flus off this year for sure. Uh, thanks very much, Tom. But I have a little bottle. Tom sent me a little bottle of something for myself. And um, I might lock the doors next Saturday night. Turn off the lights. And see how, see how it goes. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, so basically what I've done, I've put on that little hackle there and I've just brushed it down a little bit as you can see. Okay, a little bit more prominent than the dubbing and that is a really soft hackle. So that thing is going to mash in a bit when it gets when it gets wet and it's um, going to uh, be very, very attractive and move a little bit for the trout indeed. It's um, one I've used quite, quite often. So you can put in your partridge. Partridge is a little bit different the way we do it. But... Um, it's, it's worth experimenting with some really soft uh, grizzle as well. That's a grizzle slash Cree slash badger. Um, thanks, Declan Piggott. It is when you when you have plenty of time, Declan, and I'm kind of just taking it step by step. I say, you know, when it comes to fly tying as well, you know, when you, you look at flies and you think, jeez, when you see the finished thing, how do I bloody tie that thing, you know? Um, and just break it down step by step. All the techniques are very similar to most other stuff. Uh, if there's a, one or two of those little things that you're just not quite happy, they're protruding a bit up by the side. Don't be afraid to get the scissors in there and just tease it out till you get exactly what you want. Okay, going to put a little bit of a collar in there. Sometimes I put um, a hot red collar, sometimes I put an orange collar. Depends on the trout. Sometimes I put in a chartreuse. And this one I'm just going to use a little bit of my tummy fly because it was just there at my hand. And I'm going to put a little hot collar right up there. Now, normally I'd put a little bit of varnish on that, but not right now at the moment. So, Neil Hammer is on there. Uh, 22 years married is a copper anniversary. Get something made of copper. Um, Ken Woodward is on there. Hi, Ken. Ken is on the way all from British Columbia. Ken, I'm going to be doing a nymph tonight that really caught most of the fish for us in Canada. That time we were in BC there last year, or the year before is at this stage. Uh, we, we coined it the Pebble Cat. I'm not sure if I showed you that one. Um, but um, I'm going to be doing that in a little bit. So if you are there, I hope you're keeping well in Canada. Are you still up in Tunka Lake? Um, and um, hi to everybody out there. If anybody else is watching from British Columbia, uh, big hi to everybody. Hope you're all keeping well and safe out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of resin onto the top of that just to seal it all in because if that nymph is going to go in one place, it's that uh, thorax cover is going to come over. It's going to pull out once it catches a couple of fish. So I'm just doing my usual here, getting a bit of resin out into my little tray. Hi, Dave Porter. Hope you're keeping well. <laughs> Steve Livingston, Rick and Steyer, Copper John, Tom. Some great ideas coming in there. Uh, some great ideas coming in there for Tom. Tom, I hope you've got a pen and paper and writing all these notes down. Colleen is going to be super delighted with Jack Christmas time. 
So I'm just gathering up a bit of uh, UV resin on, as you can see, a nice blob of UV resin. Now what I'm going to do is come underneath, and you're going to see me do this a few times tonight, come underneath and make sure everything's well trapped down in position. And I'm going to come back onto the body slightly, attach that resin and just pull it over the top. See the way I did that? One movement, job done, okay? Give it a blast. Adds a nice, kind of adds the taper to fly, but also adds a bit of security to the top of that, ties in that, you know, um, ties in the, <clears throat> the Tommy fly trade, makes everything nice secure, and keeps any hackles in place facing down the way. Okay, it doesn't allow, you can put a bit more on if you want, and when we go on to the pebble cat later on, you'll see me add a little bit extra on, because I'm going to be working with different material up around there. But it just finishes off that fly really well. There's just one little bit of stuff in that there, and I just want to take it out. And that's it. That's a flashback pheasant tail. One that works really, really well for me. Um, so you're not using cock cackles, by the way, if anyone's just joining us. We're using a, a soft badger <coughs> Cree slash cheap hen. It's just lovely and soft. Uh, really, really good for that. For kind of um, that kind of a, a hackle. Very good for spiders as well. We're going to do um, we're going to do um, some a spider session, which is going to be after Christmas as well. Uh, a few guys have been on looking for spiders, about wet flies and spiders. So we're going to dedicate an entire night. It might even take two nights. Um, <laughs> Jason Corcoran has the answer there, Tommy. You should have went to Pennies with Dave. Um, so <clears throat> what we'll, we'll do a whole night based on wet flies, uh, traditional wet flies, spiders, how to fish them properly, uh, things like that, to the best of my ability and the knowledge I can give you. But there's a lovely little flashback pheasant tail. Really worth a go. Um, definitely... Definitely give that one a whack in the in the new season. Um, hope Jason, hope you're keeping well there down in, in County Watford. Hope everyone's keeping well enjoying their Saturday night. Um, now, let's see if anybody has any questions. By the way, <coughs> please shoot them over. Uh, say hi, say hi to the group. We have a good few people on tonight. Great to see everyone back on tonight, and hope everyone's enjoying it. So, if you have any questions, by all means, do shout. Uh, if you want to share it, hit the share button there on your page and uh, invite a few friends along as well if you want. Um, okay, so the next kind of curved nymph we're going to do is a nymph that I fish. I go through phases of fishing it. I'm not going to tell you for a minute what it is. <coughs> but I go through phases of fishing it. Um, myself and Robbie, I think Robbie was, myself and Robbie feed him when Robbie used to reside in Kilkenny. He lived, used to live beside each other and we used to do an awful lot of um bouncing off each other in relation to patterns and stuff like that and this is one that um you know we came across and uh, got a lot of success on it and then i'd go away from it a bit and then i'd come back to it and then it was only really last year um last season i started fishing it again and again had some really good success on it um and i'm just going to find the right bead here now to suit that um not an over complicated name very simple name not one you see in everyone's fly boxes. I'm not going to tell you. First person in to tell me um, what nymph I'm doing. I was going to tie away, going to tell you the materials I'm using. So again, I'm going to the C4WBL Marutu uh, size 12. Got a 3 mil silver bead on that, okay? Going to start off this time with um, my Kevlar. As always. I'm actually missing... Um, a red thread bobbin there at the at the end of it there. So I must have left them I'm not gonna go on. I'm gonna find another way of walking around this here for a minute. Gonna add in a little bit of cocktail on. Um hi Jose, hope you're keeping well. Where are you from, Jose? Um great to have you on board. Um gonna add a little bit of cocktail on. Now probably do, now this is a bit of a tweak from the original pattern. Um and uh normally it would be pheasant tail you're adding on this but the one disadvantage about pheasant tail is it's brittle and after two fish you have no tail on it so we're going to use cocktail yarn okay anybody want to take a stab out and try <coughs> what i'm going to do now is add in some i hope silver water i hope i brought it i did i did i did i brought it i was in a bit of a rush there now this evening um so little bit of silver wire okay make sure the silver wire is on top of the hook and it goes the whole way up to the bead all right this is a heavy silver wire i use this it's not a light one okay this is pointed this is a Savoia point two 
um, 0.02 down on earth and try it again now this might be a bit more of a giveaway okay so Jose Camilla Zoo where is that I'm really sorry Jose excuse my ignorance uh, am I uh, you might enlighten me a bit on that one now and educate me a bit hi Ray McCabe uh, Michael Callaghan no it's not a Frenchie no it's not for the body here I'm going to put in a little bit of Myler anybody want to have a guess Myler on the body now but before I put in the Myler I'm going to tighten some Globally no not a Frenchie I'm going to have to think of a prize now if I don't get it soon I might have to think of a prize to encourage us all to come on there and guess what it is I'm doing not a Perdigon Trevor sorry about that no no come on guys now it goes into Perd and I was actually wrong I'm going to switch that back now just to confuse us a bit more and it should be the Pearl going in first because the first thing in should be the last thing off the body oh Ken Woodward in Canada Good man, Kane. Rainbow Warrior. Absolutely, sir. Great stuff. Great stuff. It is. It's a Rainbow Warrior. Hands up, anybody fishing fishing Rainbow Warriors over the last couple of years. Lovely little nymph. Um, say, I've been fishing it on and off. Definitely. Okay, so he's in the Great Lakes area in USA. Great to have you here, Jose. Um... Yes, Davey, great question. And I was asked that soon. Martin Fennessy, it is a rainbow, and you're a little bit behind. Ken Woodward in, in BC in Canada, uh, up there in Tunker Lake. Got, got there before you. Well done, Ken. Um, so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting an underbody, and this is where I said I would normally put just a red tray, but we're going to put a global underbody on this. Um, so uh, single nymph, absolutely. You know, And it's something that's not done enough by your nymphers. Everyone goes to the two and think that but definitely single nymphing can be very very effective um especially when you know fishing for maybe fussier fish um lighter water smaller pocket water or the particular type of nymph you're fishing uh it might be fish well as a team and it could be single nymphing but um yeah absolutely i would i would constantly can i think of any particular situation to recommend you to fish single nymphing not a hundred percent it just depends on the day you know if your typical standard urine infant isn't work your, your normal setup well then you've got to make adjustments you've got to switch and, and try something different um and one of those things i would try at times is um single infant definitely so now i'm going to co cover that red with some pearl now if i am not mistaken the original time of this should be mirage off the body of this okay but i'm not using mirage for my one I'm just using pearl. Okay. Brian Canty, you're absolutely right. Rainbow Warrior. Um, good man, Ken, was first in there. But th the original tying of it should be um, Mirage. Okay. I'm going to use pearl. Yeah. I'm not sure. Anybody know who invented the Rainbow Warrior? Maybe Ken. It is more of a, a Western uh, pattern. Um so there, Dave Cockle is on now. I know Dave is, is a very accomplished uh, nympher. And um, yeah, he uses it. It's better for sight fishing, good man, Dave. Ken Woodward's on there and Ken fished a lot in BC. And when we were up in BC last year, it was only single nymphing. Um, and it affects how, how that's, that's a really good point, Ken. It affects how he makes his leaders and the rods to use. And I know definitely in, in Slovenia, it's single nymphing. So we've been at world championships in Slovenia where it's been only one nymph. And we, you know, you go over and think, oh God, one nymph, how am I going to goddamn get that nymph to penetrate down to the deep depths and stuff like that? So Kieran Riley's under Lance Egan. And I think you're right, actually, Kieran, this is Lance Egan. That, yeah, um, hey, Mike, Mike, Mike is on there as well from BC, Mike, are you? Uh, hope you're keeping well. Hope all the family is keeping well. Um, Mike Lermont, yeah, great, great to see you on there, Mike. Um, so, you know, it, it does play this whole psychological factor when you're going to these destinations where you have to sing a nymph. And even when we were going to British Columbia and we're thinking, God, one nymph on a, on a, one nymph on a, on a lake, how the hell are we going to work that when we're here in Ireland? We normally use the teams of flies, you know, and flies work for each other the way we kind of do it, lock style and stuff like that. And we're going over there fishing single fly. But, you know, once you get into it, 
you, you forget about that and it's amazing and you know it's it's what we got to do more of here in, in in kind of this side of europe is do that single fly fishing um you know and when we go on to the to do them and mike you you remember i gave you that uh pebble cat going home i think it was the one with the bent hook i gave you and the final day when you dropped me off the cabin in in bc but um we're, you know and i'm going to talk a bit about single fly fishing on lakes and stuff when i when i'm going to do that fly because you know you do you learn how to adapt you do kane is right there you adjust your leaders you adjust the rod you just you just the way you fish and it can make a huge difference um you know and it is something that should be experimented a bit more you know we all fall into and i'm as guilty as anybody of falling into this trap of just doing the same bloody thing every time we go out um particularly pigs on their bring on the bring on the wets um you know we do the same thing we put on the two nymphs we go back to similar water we attack that similar water we clock up the numbers and then we you know we say hey, it's great i had 40 fish today brilliant but what really what did you learn you know and we we've got to get into more of this mindset as a group of, of you know people or anglers that share and whatever else of you know challenging ourselves put ourselves into those awkward situations you know go into single nymph go into unlikely water that you normally fish and really challenging ourselves and i think that's what brings out you know the experimentalist in everybody and you know and, and eventually working on something and getting it over the line and really um achieving some you know new knowledge uh adding it to your yoke so uh single nymphing is something that i would certainly recommend to everybody and uh, again i'm just adding in a bit of pearl again i know the original time probably has mirage just have a, i need to put in a little bit of a bed there it's just but um this is the one i found most useful for me probably because the, the first time i tied it um didn't have the mirage so i just used pearl instead okay uh what i'm going to do here now is use a little bit of uv ice spectra some boya so uh miles you're on there looking for the right um fly line for your new 10 foot euro weight nymphal rod uh thinking just a tr weight forward three way flow flo no it depends miles now are you going to use that are you going to use that rod for solely nymphing if you're going to use it for solely nymphing well then you want the flat level racing line okay which has no taper on it because it does no. then there would be no belly as the fly line makes its way up through the rod rings the oil, the oil of the rod which is highly important for your contact sensitivity and how the whole system is going to work for you okay now if you plan to use that two weight for maybe a bit of dry fly a bit of dry dropper and a little bit of your infant well then by all means go weight forward three weight uh floating okay that will work and it will work quite well for you um if it's going to be all um brendan i'll get on to that that's a really good point you just made there i'll get on to that sec. but if you're going to fish only your own infant rig on that uh, or predominantly your nymph rig it needs to be a flat level racing line or all monofilament okay um but definitely you're going to, it, it is going to affect you very slightly i'm just going to take a bit of that off there now it's going to affect you very slightly it will still work don't get me wrong it'll still work and that's why i'm recommending you use the, the way forward three weight and um, if you're going to do a little bit of everything with the rod it will work but if it's solely for an infant well then it's got to be a flat level racing line or um a full mono it's just a little bit of that ice blue in there i'm going to pull that over the top my pearl should be mirage but i'm using pearl take away the <coughs> the waste so brendan doolin was on there and he was yes all around put it as a money on average now okay miles so then go for the way forward three week give me a show tomorrow and i will give me a bell tomorrow you'll find my number if you don't have my number send me a private message give me a ring and i'll talk through the lines with you uh, as regards um what's the best line to have what's your best options um and find and you know price wise and stuff like that there is some good lines out there um that i use because i do use a weight forward three weight on my two weights for my dry fly and dry dropper so i have some experience here and i have no problem sharing with you so give me a bell tomorrow miles um anytime during the day i'm in the shop all day tomorrow or monday tuesday whenever it suits you i'm gonna tie a little hot collar on that again it's tommy fly number 14 i know i use it a lot you, got, you might be all saying jeez there he's off again with that tommy fly 14 is just you know for over here in irish pd waters it's a really good color i find i have a lot of confidence in it and um no problem miles you're very welcome very welcome we're always as accommodating as possible here 
in uh, Kilkenny. Anybody ever has any questions or need a little bit of advice, please don't ever be stuck. Pick up the phone, send me a message. If I've got an answer for you, I've got an answer for you. If not, I'll tell you someone who does have an answer for you or I'll go find it out for you. Uh, I won't try and bully you. Um, most people that know me know that's the way I work. And um, the phone is always on. I say. So now I'm going to just take another little bit of our resin. And again, I'm going to start the back and just draw it over. Attach to the body, just a little bit of... Uh, and I find that just gives me that little bit of security on that... Um, A little bit of security on the thorax cover helps keep that uh, tommy fly tommy fly in there and as you can see i'm just putting my hand behind it because of the glare that's off all the lights here you don't really get to see that it's, it's not the lens or the um, yoke is out it's just that you don't really get to see it. so that's my version of the rainbow warrior another lovely little nymph curved nymph um again not a g cook and stuff like that going to fish a little bit different can can make can make a little bit of a difference there sometimes when trout just aren't in that situation where they want the jig style nymph or your standard nymph and curved nymphs are something that we don't want to go away from you know we gotta we gotta we gotta stick to you know keep them in the box there they are fantastic and uh, they're also very uh, um what would i say uh you know they well we're looking for the right word there but i can't think of it they, you know they work everywhere like i would use them you know buzzer fishing i would use them thanks trevor um i would use them buzzer fishing i would use them bank fishing you know, single nymph. When I was in British Columbia, a couple of, and we were going to get to that pebble cat very soon. Um, but when I was in British Columbia, you know, that was the style of nymph that really worked for. So, uh, single nymphing on the, on the lakes, like out of a drifting boat with a drogue. Um, so, it's um, definitely a style of nymph. We, we, you know, we all get wrapped up in these. Uh <laughs> David Rang's on there. He's on to John Ruby. Uh, looking for a lesson on the black water yeah john ruby's a, a good man on the black water now um a, a man well worth well worth taking a, an education from there davy um good question dylan what i use dylan this is the system i've been using for years okay so i got these boxes we actually sell these on the website as well they're bead boxes they've got slightly curved edges on them and basically what i've all my silver beads in it and as you can see now some of the writing is wearing off a bit but I have them all in their individual kind of 2.5, 3mm, 3mm slot, 3mm slot, 3mm barrel. You know, kind of each um, um, each style of bead has its own little compartment. That's the silver ones. Then I have my copper box. And it's really good because I pack up, I often travel, I travel so much, and I bring fly tank gear with me. So I have to pack up the beads constantly. And in those boxes, I just take them off the shelf, put them into the put them into the, the, the bag or the suitcase and go, you know, so I'm always conscious when I have my flight in gear, I have everything packed in boxes, um, storage tubs, and it's just easy, like I can pack up my entire flight in kit if i got to go do a show or a club wants me. Um, Ryan Quinlan, they'll work anywhere. They'll work anywhere. If you fish it with confidence, it'll work anywhere. Um, Kieran Sherlock's out there, and he says, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's Josie on there, and he uses slip weights for single nymphing. If you, if you, yeah, you can use slip weights, absolutely. Uh, don't think they're competition friendly, but you can. Um, when John Ruby's on there and he's replying to Davy, they're going out to fishing in the black water. Um, so yeah, that's how I store my nymphs. That's are my beads. That's that's just the way I do it. I find it easy and quick. Get in, get your stuff out, and uh, move on as to say. So what I'm going to do here now is another little freshwater river pattern, and this one I've been using for a long time. Uh, very simple little pattern. But there's one or two things I want to show to you, okay? Now, this time, as you can see, I've changed hook. Just because of the style of the nymph I want to tie. This is a 644 size 14, okay? Um, so Michael Calligan's on there. Um, yeah, Michael, fishing the chromoride patterns on the indicator. Absolutely, yeah. That's what we use the pebble cat, the one you're going to see in a little while. Um, that's what really where that one came in, came into its use for us. So here I've got a 644 size 14. I got a, I think that's a 3 mil on there. Um, going to add a little bit of Kevlar onto the rise of this hook here now. So a little bit of a different shape to this one. Um, and I've got some little bit of underwork here to do for this one. Okay. I'm just going to all remember my last, um, last live shows. Um, I use a little bit of lead work. Um, I'm going to just trim this up here now for a second. Just 
great when I was ill. Now, um, so basically what I just I was just doing there, I was just flattening out. It was all a bit twisted up me. A bit of uh, Tommy Fly flat lid. Okay, so this is number four. And basically, I'm just going to trim this. Now, normally I have a second scissor, but I don't recommend cutting any wire or um, lead with your scissor. But if you have to do it, use the back end of the scissor. Don't use the point. Okay, so I'm just cutting it at an angle. And then, as you can see what I've done there now, I've just got a really fine angle on that one. Trying to work these cameras. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do the same a couple of mil up. All right. So, I got a small little, almost triangulated piece of lead. And basically what I want to do is I want to increase the rise that's on that hook. But I don't want to add any width to it. Okay, for this one and uh, another shrimp pattern we're going to do in a little while. And very important with shrimp patterns, you don't want to bulk them up width wise. But height wise you want that stance on them because shrimp patterns should flicker in the water okay when they're coming down to the river um and um you, you know which we're trying to heighten the rise without widening the width i suppose so i've just got that and i'm going to just tie that in on top directly on top of the hook now it can be tedious enough as anybody remembers from my previous live fly tank shows in march he uh, had to actually go away from this and come back to it for a while. I think a few people were recommending me to take a drink. Uh, but that's, hey, look at that live fly time. It doesn't always work in a way. And no matter how much practice you put into your fly time, you'll always break thread. You'll always snap things the wrong way. Hackers will snap. Uh, underbodies will fall, flop over. That one worked out pretty okay. So I'm happy with that one. Okay, so you can see what I've done. I've just increased the rise, but I've added nothing to the width. Okay, really important for doing shrimp patterns. And stuff like that. this is a little fresh water shrimp pattern um now what i'm going to do there is i'm going to add a little bit of super glue to that because i've no extra lead body going over you can put a little bit of resin on there and of course my super glue is lock tight um i used it last week and that ain't going open okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put just a little bit of resin into that there just to give it a bit of so as i'm starting to do the rest of the work underneath and down the back end of the hook i don't happen to just knock it off uh, it can be frustrating enough, so. Just take another little bit of resin out there. Give it another try. And I'm just going to. A little bit either side. Don't want to, again, bulk it, so I'm just going to pinch it off there, the worst of it. But there's enough on there to secure that lid, secure the thread in there. Give it a little bit of strength. Normally, I would super glue that. And normally, if I was tying these in bulk, I would sit down, we'll finish that now, put it away in a piece of foam. Uh, hey, Loren, Loren's on there from France. Good to see Loren. Hope you're keeping well over there in France and everyone's well. Um, what I would do is I would then stick it on a piece of foam, do 30, 40, 50, all depends on how many I have to do, different sizes or whatever. And that's that. That's your underbody work done. If it was a little bit bigger hook, I would use a wrap of um i would do wrap a fine wire fine, fine lead on top of that as well but not on this this smaller kind of version uh for for trout if i was going grailing it would tell you a lot of similar stuff for grailing and uh, i would use a wrap of lead on it then as well just to add that extra bit of weight because it be, might be on a size 10 or something like that but not for this particular one um i'm not going to now let me think about the next stage here we're going to add in a little bit of ribbon material so this is going to be 0.12 monofilament going to add that in there for the rib Now you can put a little bit of a tail on these as well. An awful lot of people you see put a little bit of partridge on the tail. This particular pattern, I don't. Uh, some of the grail and stuff. Um, hi Martin, thanks very much. He's he's enjoying it. Um, Martin O'Rourke is on there. But for this particular pattern, I don't, okay? Now, again, there's a few different ways to try it and I'm going to explain all the different ways as we go through, especially when it comes to putting on the, the backing, okay? Now, there is a multitude of different types of backing you can use, okay? Um, you got different types of scud backing that's that's a bit stretchy, okay? I think I'm going to try and put that up there. A bit stretchy. That stuff is from was Waspy. Have it a long time. Uh, good. Can can be brittle enough now that that's there a while. You got sheets. I'm actually going through some of my scud boxes here. Uh, you got sheets of stuff. Trim it up yourself. Can be good. Depends on the color you want. Um, different types of you know 
more different types of uh, thanks Mar- Marty's on there from the north hope you're keeping well Marty and uh, yourself and Paul are keeping well up there um, that's more of a kind of um, gee, I guess I know how I describe that stuff got it years ago different kind of foils anyway look at there's a multitude of stuff up there and um, there's some stuff I'd recommend there's other stuff I can't say I don't recommend um, what you call it is quite good and I use it quite a bit is the uh, thin skin by waspy okay that stuff you'll see it on our website as well use that quite a bit quite good a little bit heavy um have you ever t- yeah i know what you mean steve um yeah i have i have done it that way i find this way is probably the best way to keep the, the, that really narrow profile of the nymph and then as i said if it was a slightly bigger nymph or i wanted a um <laughs> Good man, Mikey. Mikey got his gift voucher off us there during the week. He's his lovely uh, wife, Edwina, got him a gift voucher, and uh, Mikey got it during the week. So give us a shout, Mikey. We're going to look after you with that gift voucher. We might make it even stretch a little bit further for you. Um, but I say, if I was doing something bigger, I would wrap it and do it. But I have found for the style of the way I the way I want this nymph to fish to get as much flicker on it as possible, where it kind of twists in the water a little bit, is very important to me. Um, that tying it in as thin a profile on top. Is, is the way I like to do it. Um, so there's loads of different options there, right, guys, for um, for doing sc- for doing scoop back on this one. And and some of these people would also have seen um, me do previous videos or have wrote blogs about it. For this particular one, and for an awful lot of my scuds and stuff like that, this is the scud back I'm going to be using. This is Quality Street Wrappers. You're going to be getting a whole, and I want to do this for a reason, right? Because you're going to be getting a ton of these over the next couple of mo- over the next couple of weeks. All them quality streets, don't chuck them in the bin. Keep them. They are fantastic for doing the backs of scuds. Some of the best shrimp patterns I have. And I have to tell you, bloody hundreds of things every year for grayling. That's the backing I use. Okay. Comes in colors. All different colors. Blues, browns, oranges, reds, greens, uh, yellows. If you put one on top of the other, you get a different color. Um, I keep boxes of them. Okay. Don't throw them out. Really easy. But there is a way of using them. There's a way not to use them to make them effective. Okay. And the really big problem here most people have with using that kind of foiling is when you're cutting it. Okay. Because if you don't cut it the right way, it won't be worth shit yet. Excuse the language. Okay. So if I was to take my scissors now. And you can see the way that one was cut initially. Okay. There's edging on it there. See that edging, that broken edging. It was cut rough. And there's all these little frayed edges on it. Okay. You catch that. One pull, it rips. Not worth a damn. So if I was to cut a strip off that with a scissors and go snip, snip, snip. So there'll be three edges there. Even if you try and do it as neat as you can, there's always going to be that break in the cut. And you tie it in over the back and you do your work on the body and you do everything else ready to go. Pull that over the top. As soon as you give any bit of pressure at all to get it down over the edge, bang, it's gone. Okay, you're going to break off and you're going to curse and you're never going to use it again. But there is a way you use it. I use it and I uh, find it very, very good. I say I tie a lot of shrimps with it. Had great success in the River D with it. Had great success with the pinks and the um, cheap nymph skin. Absolutely, Joe Hopper. Yeah, balloons really cheap nymph skin and, and very good. But if you're looking for that shine, that transparent look, um, Michael Callaghan, <laughs> you're 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 a happy man. So you will have plenty of quality streets there. Michael Callaghan has three boxes of quality streets on the top of the fridge. So you don't get that transparent look that you get off of uh, the likes of quality street paper but absolutely yeah rubber uh, balloon does make um a very good so cutting it with a blade it's you know you need a really good you know steel steel ruler and stuff like that and it can work the easiest way i've done it found full clip the one i use all the time and basically what i do i get that in there and while i'm looking at the edge that's the amount of material that's going inside the bull clip before i close the bull clip and I'm getting a fair idea. Now, if you cut it the wrong size, just throw it in a box and leave it there. You, you can um, cut another piece. It's not as if you're, you're buying the stuff, all right? Um, <laughs> Robbie Berry, the wife has low there too. So how do we cut it then? We get a very sharp razor blade, okay? Not a scissors, nothing else. Not even a standing light. This is, this is as sharp as they come. You get it in. Now, don't ever put the quality street, the full, over, the, over one side, okay? So it's overhanging that side. That's fine. I only need about half of that to make a nymph okay um yes brendan doolan polish sausage skin i use the same as myself for different types of scuds absolutely fantastic stuff learned that many years ago when the polish used to come and stay in my house um 
but this is just uh, another way of doing it so what you do is you get the blade in onto that flat, flat part there the part we've left exposed and in one motion swipe it clean off see now we got one clean cut across that that's not going to break now i'm not going to say it's not going to break because now my look i'll put it in there and i'll break the bloody thing it can break but it is the best way to give you a lovely little tapered section i'm going to try to get onto the camera i'll just get in there a lovely little tapered section of that body material to cover really good and uh, you get that lovely shine off it you get the transparent look off it if i don't want it to be too um too so i'm going to tie that in the butt now there is some guys that will tie it in at the head after the body bring it back over and use the rib to attack it but um to, to tack it onto the, the fly and secure it in i'm one of the guys that like to tie it in at the butt so i'm just looping that around at the butt tying it in make sure it's well secure okay now what i'm going to do now is take a wee drink uh, thanks mike so john ruby and david Brennock are going after salmon next year now what we're going to use for the body for this is a bit of hair a bit of hair normally dubbing in various different colors and um, got some different types of hair here um it's going to be an olive okay so we're always going to start and i have a kind of a thing where i'd always use you know the lighter olives or whatever color i want to be at the butt and i'd work up to a dark if you notice most of these kind of shrimpy things that are um you know the head of it's kind of dark um so i'd always start light working the way up okay now the quick way is just double on like normal whip it up there have a few different colors brush it out do it run it off absolutely perfect okay what i'm going to do here is i'm going to form a little double brush okay with three or four different colors and hair so what i'm using here now is the scary fly just our hair pack okay we've got a lot of mixed colors about four or five um there's about four or five different shades of olive in that and i'm just going to go through them um here just pinch out a few little bits and i'm going to just lay them out here on the table in front of you basically you're not going to be able to see it so i'm taking a very small pinch of light olive just putting it on the table in front of me make sure there's nothing really there in your way a uh, small pinch of that before you go to make your double brush do this because otherwise you're not going to have enough hands to work okay go um light olive medium olive put them in order as well okay we don't want a ton of stuff on this but we want just enough to make sure we cover all that underwork so light olive medium olive then i'm probably going to go maybe for a little bit of golden olive yeah something just that little bit different a little bit of golden olive in there yeah the focus on it's just uh, gone a little bit there um don't know why actually let me just go in there and check that chris for a second guys um i can check it here one second we don't want to lose the focus on it because it's something that's just focus should be a bit better that's going to come on better for you there now okay hope that's better there steve um so i'm just stacking out me, me, me different color olives here three to four is kind of enough um, and then i'm going to have a little bit of kind of um black a little bit of black that will mix into um a little bit of black that's going to mix in there at the head okay now once i've got everything laid out in front of me i'm ready to go so now i'm going to take me dubbing me dubbing needle and i'm going to as usual as you've all seen me before massage out that kevlar with the scary fly kevlar which it is really easy to split get a good split on it and hold it out with the finger get rid of that now the light one goes in first a little bit of light olive in there first bring it up the fly I'll put another little not too much light olive now because often what happens here and i am a devil for making this mistake is you'd be quite surprised how little you need to cover this fly and what you do is you put in what you think is enough light olive enough medium olive enough golden olive or olive or dark olive whatever you choose to put in and when you actually spin it and double it up all you have is mostly light olive and a tiny bit of olive because you put in too much so less is more for the body because you can put in an extra bit of black if you need afterwards okay to bring it up to the 
stop. Just adjusting my hands down there for a second. Any last and stiff, I'll just go back in. Okay, go again there. Be a little bit gentle. Sometimes they'll fall out on you. Sometimes we'll wiggle around, but you just be gentle and take your time. Saturday night, no rush. And once I've got it all stacked in there, like so, as you can see, now I got the tones, the light going through into the dark. I'm happy that. Pinch me trade. Christoph Smoke Mackerskin, yeah, I've heard of some people uh, doing that all right, yeah, yeah. Grand, yes, he's all a more, bit more happier with the quality of the picture on that. Sorry, I don't know why that or how that got adjusted, but it did. So I'm just spinning that in. Just getting that thread bobbin to spin for me. Tease out any of the long stuff you, you kind of think that just to give it a bit of uniformity to the Brent Dublin bush. So there's loads of options coming up there for um, the skins and nymphs. It's great. That's you know that's brilliant. It's great to see so many people coming on and contributing um, with all their tips and stuff like that. Well done. Thanks everyone for that. It's really great to see so many people. You know, and every week we go through this show and you know, and I, I do look so forward to it. Kind of from about Wednesday Thursday on, I say, oh, I'm really looking forward to Saturday night. You know, when you start thinking about it and what will I share with the guys and girls tonight, you know, or and, and Saturday night, you know, kind of share. I love to. I love sharing and. Um, you know, and then it's, it's great to see other people coming on and sharing too. And um, that's what it's all about. It's not just about sitting here listening to me. Um, yeah, Graham Connolly, I've, I've, yeah, uh, anti-static bags are quite good and really good for buzzers and stuff. Um, but it's great seeing other people coming on and sharing. It's not all about me coming on here, just blabbering on for an hour and a half, two hours, and you all sitting there and soaking it in. You know, it's great when you actually come on. And um, I really do enjoy seeing your comments and feedback. So please do keep it coming. Um, so now what I've done is I'm just going to take that double rush. And I'm going to wind it up the body, okay? Now, the difference between doing and perfect, I've actually came just a micro bit short, which is fine. So, the difference between doing a dubbing brush like that and just banging on a dubbing, if you bang on those three or four colour du color dubbings, you will get kind of a definitive kind of break between the colours, where if you actually mix it properly and um, spend a bit of time with that, you will get a much more kind of uh, natural uh, transition from the light to the dark, okay? And if you come up a tiny bit short, you go... God, I could do in another little bit of black there. By all means, I'll just take on a little bit of black and dub it on as normal um, and add it in. Or you can go through the process of spinning it back on, but not, it's okay up at that stage. Just to um, add in a little bit. Dub it on loosely, don't go mad. Okay. Then we're going to do is we're going to take that brush and we're going to just paper all that down now this is the same process i would use for grayling bugs you see pictures on my profile and stuff about my grayling bugs and stuff like that um and uh, it's the very same process i would use for those but this is, is one i use here in ireland for trout and i'm just trimming off some of those extra long there's a lot of trimming going to be done with this afterwards just to get exactly the way i want it but you see that lovely long cloak i have down in that shrimp pattern now and this is lovely soft hairs here so that's going to it's going to look really well i'm then going to take my skin without putting too much pressure on it and don't worry about any kinks to come on it now for a minute or any way it might look till you're finished and i've just placed my hand i've got it up to top over over the back and i've just placed my hand on it to hold it in position okay if you go and just lash on that trade kevlar or anything like that in any kind of skin you know you, there's a good chance you're going to cut it or it's going to fall down in behind the bead and you're going to put pressure on it and you don't want that okay hold it in position there use your left hand to take the pressure off that and gently a couple of turns and as you start making a couple of extra turns then start applying a little bit of pressure on it and just help hold that into position okay and i'm quite happy with that now for the moment don't forget we got an, um, another rip up one really good tip don't cut off the waist here okay if you if it's in your way and you want to trim it trim it don't cut it off because if i start as i start winding up this rib and stuff like this um you know i can knock that trade something can happen something can slip it can slip down too much to one side now it does tend to move a little bit and i will manipulate it back with my hand as i'm working it up the, up the body up the rib up the body but like if it moves to beyond repair well then i just have to undo a bit of trade i still have enough here to take it take it back up again and, and fix it and uh, where if you cut that off now nice and clean next thing the tread falls off that goes back you are going to take it everything off going right back to the dead work to um, make up for it so leave on that little bit of waste it's okay there till you finish up all right one turn at the butt 
have your your dubbing brush at the hand in case you need it. And as I come around every time, I'm going to brush back the dubbing. Depending on the imitation of the fly, I'm just going to take my time here now. And I'm going to do it one turn at a time. We're going to still brush it all again afterwards, so don't be over worried if, a, if there's one or two um, trapped dubbing fibers sticking up. So you've got plenty there. Not overly putting pressure on it. Not for this pick on. If I was doing more grailing and stuff like that, I would be putting a lot of pressure on this larger flies. This is a very small little shrimp pattern that I know works um, here for us and the Nor and uh, up in kind of east coast rivers that I fish quite regularly. Um, and even on the likes of the Fane, anyone on there from Dundalk on the, on the River Fane, this is a killer. But when I'm doing the one for the Fane, I use a brown. Um, I use a brown back on it. So, just keeping everything in place, manipulating everything, coming up along until we get near the head. Everything's secure now, everything's safe. Two turns over the top, take the pressure off the, the monofilament and put the pressure back on the thread. A couple of turns over the back and now you can put away the monofilament. And now we can trim off. So in order to trim that off, don't just go in and cut it dead straight off. There's no need. All you need to do is get in there, get the slightest nicks on one edge, and it just breaks away. Nice and clean. A couple of more turns to secure all that in up there. And now take your dub and brush, and brush it all out again. So this is a small, very slim, very skinny little shrimp that we want. Now we're going to do a little bit of trimming on that. And that got kind of caught up. I'm going to just remove that out of the way. And then I'm going to take my scissors and go in slightly at an angle and clear the hook. So on shorter, out the back, longer out the front, basically, is a good back line, as you can see. All right. happy with that one this is exactly what I want you can still see how slim the profile of that nymph is it's barely wider than the hook and that is crucial the effectiveness of this nymph trust me absolutely crucial it has to go down through water columns it can't I'm going to finish that off there for a second take away that thread now we are going to add in a little bit of um, Dobrich number 12 as a little collar line. Hang in there for a second till I thread this up. Hope everyone's keeping well on Saturday night. Don't forget, uh, next week we are going to move off of our Nymphant. Our four-week Nymphant series will be, we'll be moving off it. And we will be going on to do a dry fly section next week. So it'll be all dries next week. We're going to do a lot of people asking about different things about king cameras and stuff like that. Hi, Elaine. Hope you keep well. Elaine Munn is on there from the Irish Fly Fair. Um, we are going to be doing a whole dry fly section next week. We're going to do some work on king cameras, some nice little dries and stuff like that. And then we're going to take a break for a week. And following that break, um, we are going to have the Christmas special on the 27th, which is a Sunday. It's going to start at 8 o'clock and you're going to see some posts coming up. We're going to have lots of giveaways, lots of guest tires on and the whole lot. But if you want to be a part of it and if you want to say hello, um, especially say an awful lot of people have been on here for the last 6 or 8 weeks or even 10 weeks or however long we've been going. And saying hello to each other, saying good evening to each other. But, uh, you know, people don't know the faces. And while it's great to be reaching out to people on social media, it's also nice to see the face and say, oh my God, that's what Graham Lonigan looks like. That's what David... Donovan looks like so uh, send me a little video on, on messenger um, send me a little video messenger just saying happy Christmas everyone hope everyone's keeping safe and well uh, say your name and where you're from and if you want to plug your business or anything like that at all for what good it may be please by all means do say what you want send me on a little video I'll stitch them all together and during the Christmas show then we'll put it out there so everyone can sit and see each other's face so by all means take a small little video Send it on to me. Say hi to everybody, and we will put it up there for the Christmas special. But we've lots of guest tires on. We've we've some uh, 
some special guests coming on there to say hello to you all and uh, we have lots of great prizes as well on the night so please make sure we do check it out we'll try to get as many people there as we can and have a bit of fun on the 27th of December um, when everyone's sick of eating and the whole lot and we just want to sit down and do a bit of Friday so I have a little hot collar on there the nights actually just come loose there as well now it's one of these nights where things are just moving around a bit on it okay stop bouncing there sorry that's better okay so what I'm going to do there now is I'm going to put a little bit of resin on top of that again like so you've seen this you've seen me do this now on every nymph uh, so far and it's just the way I like to kind of finish off the back of them but this one has a particular reason um, because the resin at this stage is not the end and I'll see why I'm actually doing this now in a minute I'll just bring this one little stick in coming up next is the pebble cat okay I'm not going to tell you how we named it why we named it uh, I don't think there should ever be public knowledge uh, <laughs> for the rationale for why we did it. But anyway, really good pattern. So I'm going to put a little bit of resin over it. Just, just again, attach it to the body and drag it over the top. I'm going to come just down on the sides just a little bit. Don't want to over influence the shape or anything like that at all. I want to use it for security and I want to um, seal up that drawbridge. Okay? Because over the top then, once I've done that, I want to add a black thorax is there okay so I'm going to take my sharpie and I'm going to put the sharpie on the back now if I didn't do that resin the initial coat of resin there what would have happened is that black marker would have ran down into all the threads and stuff okay I don't want that to happen the focus is kind of getting lost on me a little bit there um, thanks Neil thanks Neil uh, thanks Miles um, I'm just going to have a quick look at that focus again for you guys because I want you to make sure you just get to see all this um, so the reason why now you could argue with me and say well why didn't you just use um, why didn't you just use black UV well that's fine if you have it but not everyone has black UV everyone has the clear alright um, so you can do that but make sure you put in a little bit of um Isn't it? Make sure you um, put in a bit of UV resin on that fly first before you put in that black hotspot. Otherwise, it will come down over. Now, when I can even remember fishing the Isle of Ely many years ago in the European Championships, uh, I was the captain of the Irish team that time, and um, we were using this kind of shrimp pattern, um, fishing off the lakes as well. So they do work, you know, this this kind of curl like. It would be definitely a, a style of a fly of a nymph that I would have in my, my lake box as well as my river boxes. Okay, that kind of thing fished, you know, um, there's one or two kind of things that annoy me there. I wish I can see them sticking out of it when I look at the video. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. So once I've got that black over the top, then I just put an, a second little bit, um, a second little bit on top of that black mark of the resin just to get it to stay there for a little longer same as we would have earlier give it a seal and that's a very a very good fish catcher I can tell you now um, really really good <laughs> there's Mike Mike is on there from BC yeah, and the top fly in, in BC in the fall over the lakes thanks a, mi thanks a million uh, thanks Neil thanks Graham um, very simple that's there's nothing really much to that but it was again showing you about you know being versatile with your materials um, it doesn't always have to be in it. and like <laughs> I'm the worst I'm the worst uh, fly shop owner in the world you know it doesn't always have to be in a packet that says fly tying materials in it there's an awful lot of very useful stuff out there and there's some great ideas came up there tonight um, from other guys you know sausage skin to dried mackerel skin to rubber balloons and it is all usable I can even remember using crisp bag for different things as well but definitely one this winter at Christmas time don't throw out the quality wrappers you can do a multitude of stuff with them um, fantastic materials low great range of colours and uh, but just remember I really wanted to show you how to cut it because that cutting process is the, the difference between you either using it or trying to once break it and then you never use it again okay clean blade straight across a, a bull clips and you'll never have a problem with that breaking really good material lovely and translucent doesn't overpower the fly but gives you that lovely sheen 
And if you look at any of my shrimp patterns for um, uh, Good Man Graham, they've bought a few of those pennies now as he did. But if you look at uh, you know some of the better shrimp patterns that I use for grail and stuff like that, if you go back over my posts there over the last couple of months, you see me putting up some pictures of these pink and white beaded pink and purpley shrimp patterns. Most of them are done in, um, thanks a million, Neil. Uh, most of them are done with quality street wrappers, you know. So um, I like saying these. I love being able to give something back, you know. I really appreciate everyone's custom and the support we've got over this year from everybody. Um, so it's always, as I say, Neil, it's always nice to give something back. So hope you're all enjoying the show and enjoying some of the tips um, and be able to take them and add them to your fly playing and fly fishing. So now we're going to move on and we're going to do that one, the Pebble Cat. Okay, Pebble Cat was to say, by the way, tomorrow I'm going to put up a question as usual. And the person that gets it right in the morning, it could be on at 9 o'clock, it could be on at 10 o'clock. I think last week I left it around 1 o'clock. So at some stage tomorrow morning ish before or late afternoon, I will put up a question on Facebook and I will ask uh, something related tonight. Whoever answers correctly first, it's not going to be a hard question. Whoever answers correctly first will win the Nymphs tie tonight on the live show and anything else I tied prior to when I was warming up and stuff like that, okay? So keep an eye out for that question um, coming tomorrow, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to tidy up and go on to a fly call with the pebble cat. Now, in two minds I want to tie this one on a 10 or a 12. Um, I tell you, I'm going to tie it on the 10. Okay, this one's going to be on 10. I do like it a lot on the 12, but because I really want to kind of explain the tying, I'm going to tie it on a slightly bigger hook. Probably won't look as good as the one I did on the 10 earlier on, but um, on the 12 earlier on, should I say, but it's, it's uh, yeah, I'll tie it on the 12 and see it. So, Mike, if you're still on there, can you remember that nymph I gave you after our last trip back to Tunka Lake? There was two of them. There was one there that really worked well for me. Um, no, I didn't, but, like, you know, finished whatever top half the table but you know even during our practice and stuff like that it just really came out on its own but i initially tied this nymph was tied for the um, saka river in italy okay uh just something you know sitting out mucking before i went on holidays tied up this thing um nothing it's not i'm not going to revolutionize your, your nymph patterns here by the way but uh, you know it was a really good pattern and um it's um no <laughs> Colin, well no uh yeah mike still has it um <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Anker tells reckon it's gonna be last sweet seat next week. Um but um you're not too far off there now, Colin, but there's a there's a story behind this the, the name of this one and I'm not actually I'm, I apologize now lads. Normally I would tell everyone, but I'm not gonna tell tell the, the story behind this one. We're just gonna say it's called the Pebble Cat. Uh originally tied for the Saka River. Something just a little bit different as you do before we go on a trip and normally tie a few different things just to see if you work. Didn't overly light up the, the show over there. But certainly we got to BC. Just happened to arrive for British Columbia that time. Figured out the nymphs were working. Didn't have a whole lot of nymphs with us because all the river nymphs were sitting in Ireland. Probably should have had more nymphs with us. Um, but this is one I had in the box. Sitting there with Johnny Wilkinson uh, on that lake. Ken, you were there that day as well, I think. And put up this nymph, gave it a go. And hey, presto, we got some fish in it. Got some confidence in it. And it worked worked really well for me for that trip. So I was delighted. And um, it's one I've been tying ever since. I use it on still water. Use it on rivers. It's again one of those universal nymphs that just you should have one hidden somewhere. You don't have to sit there and tie rows and rows of them, rows of them. But the, you know, it's one of those flies where just when you're stuck, yeah, well, as Ken, you were there. Um, just when you're stuck and you just need that something, you know, what the feck am I going to do now? Here, I'll try the pebble cat. And whack, all of a sudden, you get into another try. It's, a, it's one of those universal flies, very similar to the rainbow warrior. So they're very similar to a flashback pheasant tail. It can be used anywhere. You know, it's a fly that you just should have. Okay. Now, forgive me, and I'm not going to go downstairs and get it. The original pattern has black pheasant tail. Okay. I often never hear me say, use pheasant tail for the tail of a fly. For this fly, it's got to be black pheasant tail. Okay. So I'm just going to throw in a bit of natural there for the moment because I just don't have the black. Four, four fibers of a black pheasant tail. Okay. And they're going to be in there. Not an overly long tail. Been a while since I tied one of these, so I'm just gonna have to keep me old thinking head on there. If I go quiet for a minute, you know I'm just thinking what the hell is coming next, so I don't make a total hash of it. Um yes, I know what I gotta do now. We're gonna use so you have two options here for a rig, okay? And I want to kind of just cover the boat with you, but I'm looking for the second option now before I move on. 
uh, here it is here okay so we need a black rib on this so you got two options one is black wire one is black mono okay so what you do with black mono black smoke really really good uh, well worth trying for the ribs and nymphs and stuff like that even for the ribs and dries um, yes Ryan I would I'd only use slotted beads with cheek hooks I would um, I see some people mix them up a bit whether it's by mistake or by on purpose I'm not sure but for me yes absolutely uh, countersunk for evidence straight shank or curve and only um, slotted beads on cheek hooks um, or somebody you also do a black wire okay point two whichever you want because I'm doing this on a size 10 not a size 12 I'm going to use the wire because it's a bit heavier if I was doing it on a size 12 or 14 I would use the black smoke um, monofilament it's really good and you can put a lot of pressure on that to really make that body very strong uh, with a monofilament the black mono rather than a black wire but I'm going to use the black wire on this because I don't have any heavier mono upstairs that's downstairs so I'm going to use black wire but the black mono if you've got that uh, very very good stuff to use all right again we're going to tie it in directly on top and tie it in up to the bead so you don't have any major ridges on that body okay now we're going to use some um pearl so i've got some size 12 pearl mylar here just get it out pearl size 12 pearl, pearl mylar take off a good chunk good long and it's size 10 and we're not going to attach that in there we're going to attach it in three quarters of the way up secure it in well and take it down the body take your time a little bit of pressure on it not over exerting it the rib will help trap it all in and I'm putting a nice coat down on. So basically which way you start up top is because I want two layers on it. And I want to taper down that tail, that butt section, down to the hook. I want a nice skinny ass on it basically. And then I'm a second wrap up. I'm coming over and I'm making sure I've got a very clean taper coming up that body. Taking my time. It's not a race. And tie it off. David Rennock, how would I use it on still water? So basically, I would just fish it like a buzzer, wouldn't you? Uh, put it on a single, single or a doubles rig. And uh, yeah, floating line, fire it out there. And uh, figure of eight retrieve, strip it. I know in, in, in Canada, we were, were fast pulling. We were on a drifting boat, even though we were assisted by a drogue but nonetheless um you know it's um <coughs> it's um sorry lads actually i bore you i'm supposed to be going shooting out tomorrow so i just i sent my three missed calls i was going to text them and tell them i'm live and i'll ring them back in a minute um Um, you'd be wondering if I'm going to talk too fast. So, <clears throat> you know, and just just figure of eight or let it sit stagnant, fish it under a bung, uh, whatever you want to do. Like, don't um, you know? It depends on what way the fish want it. So now I'm going to rib it. Now, just when you're ribbing it, I always tend to lie to fly on the side exactly like that. Okay. If we turn it over and I try rib it, um, it will slip. It's quite slippy, and that's where I find the mono really good. I can put a lot of pressure on that mono, and it gets a really good grip on those those uh, slippery bodies. Where I find the um, the wire doesn't get that quite of quite a grip on it, okay. So we have to kind of compensate it with um, adhesives afterwards. Um, so I'm just putting a nice, decent black rib up the body. But the best the best results I've had in, in Ireland on this fly um, since its kind of discovery was um, um, figure you know. Uh, 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 10, 15 foot single uh, single nymph uh, on a long leader and just fire it out, figure of eight it back, tweak it, you know, uh, let it hang in the system there. And uh, now it didn't fully snap off for me, but we got a load of stuff going on. 
So I'm just going to fold that in around there. So if I had an older scissors there now, I'd, I'd probably get in there and snip it off. But it's okay. We can just fold it in around. And we got to come back down around here a little bit, okay? Now, let me just think about the next stage for a second before I get stuck into it. Okay. Now I can do it. <laughs> so we're going for number 12 again. Um, number 12 here for a Clorox cover. Now, the only difference between this one and the original that you would have there, Mike, um, is the original was done with a black UV fritz. This one that I found out that works better in Irish waters uh, has an, an olive UV fritz. But definitely the one you have there, Mike, is, is fantastic. Um, so Patrick McCarthy's on there and he wants to know if anybody knows a fly that uses Woodcock CDC. Got some of French anger a few years ago, but I've lost it. Um, anybody got an answer to that one there for, for Patrick? Um, so that's the only difference to this one and the one I gave you, Mike, was the... Um, This is going to have um, olive olive fritz in it instead of a black UV. Very same materials, just different color. Okay. And now, <clears throat> and I'm not even sure, Mike. I think the one you actually got as well had white breeder, so I brought even up up the um, up the white um, up the white too. Neil, yeah, have a refill. Don't worry. Saturday night. Um, so I, I the one the original one I did, I used white glow bright uh, breeders down the sides down the sides of it. For this one, I'm going to use a micro glint breeder. So it's the only difference between this and the original is that those two changes. So I've just got some micro glint here. Took off a good snippet of it. I'm going to fold it. And I'm going to fold it again. And then that's going to lie across the back of that nib. I'm going to fold that section there on and trap that back as well. And leave them there for a moment, okay? Trap them in well. So in the original pattern, that would have been white glow bright, basically. And it, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure if uh, if that one had it on a mic or, or not. But there, there was two kind of white little snippets at the back. And basically, what I'm going to use now is a, a micro straggle fritz olive and UV gold. In the original, it would have been a black and silver or black and UV. I think it was Mike. Um, same stuff, but I'm going to use that now for um, Clorox. Take off a piece of it. Keep my hand on everything else that's been tied in previously. Make sure nothing gets pulled out of position. Bring your tread up. And as you can see, when I was building that whole thing, that whole thing, I never really went near the bead. Bead is still loose. There's still a little bit of gap there to allow me to finish off everything. You know, a bit of a problem you can have with tying the likes of these is that you know you taper everything up to the bead too soon, and then when it goes to finish everything off, there's no room there. Okay, it gets very bulky. So you know, all your work is done away from the bead, and then. Just um, the last the last stage is going to the bead. So all I'm going to do now is wind this up, making sure those little straggly bits are sticking out. Touch and turns. Now I'm sure you can put in a dubbing bush there if you want. And it'll work full fine. So I say the original pebble cat now, and I actually just now we've got our things the black UV straggle fritz, and you have the white kind of breeders down the side. Okay, that was the very original, and it does work here as well. But um, I find where are the incisions go? That's strange. There you go. Oh, sitting in front of me. Yeah, that's a good place to have them. So trim off and this gets messy this time of day and a little bit of a brush down and a brush out get as many of those little straggle bits sticking out once I'm happy with that take, I take my pearl and I'm going back over top of it making sure those little breeders are sticking out the back Push everything back now. That olive is a little bit, even though it's the same by the same company and the same material, it's a little bit finer than the black UV, believe it or not. And because I'm on a size 10, 
So you can do different shades with it. I do like it on size twelve, but I want to show you in size ten so it makes it easier to see it. Um, trap it in over well. Snip off that waste. A couple of crumbs in just for the bowl of bees. Make sure everything's well secure. If you want to put in a little bit of olive dub in there or something to hide the trade, if you're not using Kevlar, that's fine. But because we're using Kevlar, we can put on a wet finish, attach all to the bead, and pour it till it just locks in. No trade will be shown. Take away the waste. By the way, it's always tied with a goat or black bead. Um, take away the waste. And then just trim off those little breeders. You're coming down about halfway down the hook. Just a little bit, just to be subtly sticking out the back. Come to the other side and just same length. Now I'm sure this will be a great pattern to run the duck fly for any of those lock style anglers that are out there. Give them a brush out that might glint. Just a little bit of sparkle. And now because that fritz is a little bit all over the place, you can see we want to get a bit of control on that. So now we go to our, our resin, okay? Now this time, we're not going to pour it into the... We're going to take our large bottle of solar res. I use the tin hard oil thing. I find this stuff fantastic. And I'm going to come up underneath like I did before and drag everything down till I make sure all those fibers are down below exactly where I want them. Once I've got them all trapped, I'll come in on top. Make sure your laser pen is nearby. I'll come in on top and just the same way I did the ones previously... I'll attach the blob of resin to the body. And as soon as it gets attached, I pull it over the top. Okay? It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. And then still holding everything in place, you kind of want that resin to slip down a bit into the... into the... Um, I'm going to manage to get a little bit in front of it. You kind of want that resin to slip down a little bit into the... Again, my focus has gone... Shocking bad there now. I don't know why that's happening tonight. Uh, I need to have a look at that. Um, you want to let that resin, as you can see now, I'm just going to try and get a little bit more focus in. You can see the way that resin kind of drips down a little bit into the body. Or not the body, but that thorax. And that's what you want because it holds it all in place really, really well. And um, by coming over the body a little bit, letting it go down on the body, it also secures in that black wire. So there's going to be no movement on that. Um, that I was explaining about earlier on and that's it that thing there is a variation we're going to call that of the pebble cat um, <laughs> Dr. K great fly um, but that was it you, know, you can put another little bit of resin on that you can, but definitely the original was tied with uh, black UV I'm going to get the bear with me one second that, that sector is I don't know why that's happening tonight now. We keep getting caught with the... Um, it was just one of them nights where the sound wasn't working at the start. The focus is coming in now. So I'm going to get a focus right on that one to make sure you just have a, a decent sight of it. But that's what we coined the Pebble Cat over in British Columbia. Caught us, I would have to say, 70% of our fish during that competition. Um... Yeah, it's not too bad. Great little nymph. One of those nymphs that are so versatile, you should have at least one or two in the, in the river box and have definitely have one or two in the, in the, the lake box uh, for stocky bashing, for, for wild trout even in lakes. Um, absolutely one of those patterns that just just catches fish. Um, that's it. That's, that's the pebble cat. That's it. Someday I'll tell you this, if anybody wants to know why the pebble cat called pebble cat. Ask me someday when I'm when you're when talking to me properly or personally but um really good nymph um and uh well well worth having well worth having in the box but anyway look that's that's tonight wanted to kind of move away from tungsten or jig hooks and stuff like that um and get onto something a little bit more kind of um different you know so we're not forgetting about all these kind of really good nymphs that are that are worth trying and tying um, and having in your box so hope you all really enjoyed tonight uh, I certainly did. Loved having the chat. Some great tips on there from from some of our viewers and stuff, which is really important that everyone joins in. It makes it worthwhile for me um, to see people coming on board there, and um, you know, a couple of comments and stuff like that, which is great. So I hope you all really enjoyed the night. Um, and don't forget, next week we'll be back on live at half eight. 
it will be a dry fly night we will be doing lots of clink hammers and stuff like that we will then be having a break for a week where i'm going to have a night off a saturday night off if the boss allows me and we are then going to go into our christmas special don't miss that one eight o'clock uh sunday the 27th of december we got loads of guests special guests to come on we got and uh, loads of giveaways we got some great partners we're gonna have a great night we're gonna have a bit of fun that night real bit of fun um make sure you check it out and if you want to say hello which i think would be great if everybody did make a tiny video come on and just say hey my name is peter driver from kilkenny just like wish everybody on here a happy christmas and a safe 2021 simple as that we love to have as many of you send a little video send it over on messenger and uh, we can all say hello to each other we've all been on here for all the lockdown over the, sp the winter the autumn be great to start putting some faces too it's all right i know most of your faces i can see is here um thanks terry phillips terry phillips is on there from uk great stuff dave too he's on there brian canty steve lindsay you're all very welcome lads i uh, hope he's really enjoyed it I, I certainly do it's got me through this the last phase of lockdown great to be coming out the other side of it but uh do by all means please send me over little videos and don't forget i want to see those uh, mika powders next um i want to see those mika powders next saturday night uh robbie berry i want to see your creations next saturday night you're gonna to have to post them pictures so plenty of hard work this week lads uh post them pictures up here live next saturday night so we can get a look at them so anyway I'd like to wish you all a good safe and happy weekend for the rest of it enjoy the rest of your saturday night and uh dave if you're watching there now hope uh the shopping wasn't too bad uh tom i hope you figure out what to get the missus uh if not sure give me a ring and we'll look at we will we'll think of something anyway and thanks again for your, your lovely gift during the week for lily it was absolutely she was delighted with it and she told me i had to thank you tonight so by the way so i'm just gonna wait um so that's it guys girls see you all next saturday night and uh, thanks everyone for your support don't forget if you need any fly fishing stuff check out www.scarryfly.com and uh, we got everything you need on there and um stay safe everyone good night